Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a, your terrific Tuesday afternoon, Devo. Your uh, daily bread passage for today. Episode 1015, part two, or 1015, part two. Whichever way you want to say it. But your Tuesday, March the 14th, 2023. And in this one, we're going to be learning about Game of Change. From Patricia Rayburn, derived from Luke 6, 27 through 31. So I hope you enjoy the video. If you see so, you hear something you like or something you you may not have already known about this certain um, or something in the in the devotion that you that you didn't already know, hit the like button. But the like button will help. And remember the like challenge. Go back to the beginning of the morning video for explanation. Birthdays, anniversaries, and prayer requests in the comments section below. And how do you become a game of change? What do you what what do you think game of change means before we get started? Pause the video right now and put your and put your response in there for it. What you think game of change is gonna be all about. So pause the video right now and make your make your comment. And then re and, and then once you put your comment in, start the video back up and find out what what the devotion is going to be about. See, see if you can line up your um, guesses with what's actually what the book says. So, subscribe if you do, turn on notifications, share the video and channel with your family and friends, help me reach. I want to be hopefully 100 for my birthday. It's one birthday wish I want. But it looks like closer as closer as get, I'm not going to get it because I'm still at 37. So I'm, I'm saying at least 50 to 60, somewhere in that in that range for my birthday, and you have 100 by my three-year mark, which is the end of May. So if y'all do that for me, I will appreciate you more than you'll ever imagine. So without further ado, let's find about Game of Change. Patricia writes, The handshake spoke volumes. On a March night in 1963, two college basketball players, one black, one white, defied the hate of segregationists and shook hands, marking the first time in Mississippi State's history that its all-white men's team played against an integrated team. To complete in the game, to compete in the game of change against Loyola, L Y L O Y, I don't, I don't, to this day, I don't know how to spell it, um, pronounce it. Loyola University, Chicago, is a in a national tournament. The Mississippi State squad avoided an injunction to stop them by using decoy players to lead their state. Loyola's black players, meantime, had endured racial slurs all season getting pelted with popcorn and ice, and face closed doors while traveling. But yet the young men played. The Loyola Ramblers beat the Mississippi State Bulldogs 61-51. to And Loyola eventually went on to win the NCAA National Championship. 1963, wow. But what really won that night? A move from hate toward love. So as Jesus taught, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Luke 6, 27. So God's instruction of was a life-changing concept. To love our enemies as Christ taught, we must obey his revolutionary mandate to change. And as Paul wrote, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. 
The old is gone. The new is here. Second Corinthians 5, 17. But how does his new way in us defeat the old? With love. Then in each other, we f- can finally see him. So out with the old and in with the new, as they say. <laughs> and then um, in a, in a, in a um, somewhat of a song from that, that I heard from Randy Travis, it, uh, they could the sing songs called Baptism. But as the person was getting put down in the water, the, the part of the song goes, down with the old man, up with the new. See? You put the old man, the old man down and bring the new the new person up. It's like you're washing yourself all the old off of you and becoming a new a new creature in Christ. So it's down with the old man, up with the new. And then the rest of us is raised to walk in the ways of the light and truth. But it's a pretty good song if you'll if you'll look it up. Look up baptism from um Randy Travis, and you you it'll be, it'll be a good song. I've always wanted to get the uh background vocal the background music for that one. Come on with the stupid light. The focus is just going crazy. Trying to change the lighting a little bit to get it to quit doing that, and it started to do it again. I had no trouble in that first video. It started at the beginning, and then once I started recording, it didn't mess up. And now it's messing up in this one. Even though I got the light a little bit tilted. To where it's not so bright. Can't figure I can't figure this thing out. Just by just sitting I'm sitting still uh, drinking getting something to drink before I start recording. I get something to drink. And I'm just I just glance over at the screen all of a sudden it brightens up. Just for a few seconds and then it goes back to but so in your life, what leads you to see others as enemies? And what changes can you make to confront hate with Jesus' love? Let me know your responses to by putting Q1 or Q2 in your response. But ponder those questions by saying this phrase, help me, loving God, to see others not as enemies, but as your precious people to love like Jesus does. So your Bible reading today, your scripture reading for this one today, there it goes again, is Deuteronomy chapters 23, 24, and 25. And in Mark chapter 14, the first part, verses 1 through 26. So, Coming up tomorrow in part 2 of episode 10, 16, for your glory is hump day Wednesday, March the 15th. We'll be talking, we'll be learning how to be still before God. From James Banks, derived from Psalm 46. And it's that, that famous verse from there, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. That's the verse that they're getting around, huh? Stay tuned for that. I'll get to that later tonight, but you'll see that one tomorrow after one. So don't forget to leave a like. So I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on keeping on trusting God and keep you safe in all you say and do in 2023 and beyond. And until later, peace out, everybody. <whistles> so long. Farewell. Come back later. After seven, 
Give me just a second. And we'll be talking about episode 492. Yesterday I had I had trouble doing yesterday's and saying the episode numbers. But it was episode 491 yesterday and then today is 492. So now we, we officially got 8 days. So I'm saying next Wednesday I might be doing the turning point live. I might just just go live and do the turning point. I don't have to wait. Wait a minute. I'm hopefully going to have the book by next Wednesday. So that way I can do do it early enough and do it live on Wednesday. So I'll just pre-record the morning and the afternoon one, get them put up, and then later that evening I'll come in. Hopefully I'll have I'll have I'll have a book that way I don't have to wait till three o'clock in the morning before it goes live. So, but it is what it is. But coming up in episode 490, 492, we will be talking about in good hands, beginning with John. 1028, our recommended reading is Isaiah 49, verses 1 through 6. Our turning point is from Gene McClellan, and the Bible reading is Judges chapters 4 and 5. So, With that said, I love you. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep on keeping on and trusting God, and he'll keep you safe in all you say and do in 2023 and beyond. And until later, I did that already. Sorry about that. So with that said, God bless everyone. God bless America in 2023, and I'll see you later. (laughs) So until then, me and Baby Yoda, we out until then. So have a great rest of your Tuesday afternoon, and we'll see you tonight after 7. So, with that said, with that said, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Sorry about that. I'm forgetting where I was. So, goodbye.